Good morning. As part of my ongoing efforts to assist the community in determining when someone is full of crap, say, for example, Right to Record, who has been blathering on and on <clears throat> about the DHS memo, Musumisi versus the DHS. And he likes to point out the, the specific titles of the bulletins. Where did he say it? <clears throat> right there. Oh, Lord, he, he, he knows the full title. Oh, he's so educated and intelligent. Uh, anyway, to educate everybody, and this will take a minute, so grab your coffee, take a poop, whatever you need to do. We're going to go over Musumisi versus DHS. We're going to figure out what it says and what it doesn't say and whether or not right to record is retarded or super retarded. So this was filed somewhere around April 22nd of 2010. It settled at the beginning of October. You'll see that they signed the settlement on October 1st. The judge signed it on the 13th, but they signed it on October 1st. Apparently they thought they were going to sign it in September, but that time came and went. So between April, the end of April, and the beginning of October, that is not enough time to do a trial. This was not litigated. I don't know how far into the lawsuit they got before they decided that they were going to settle, but they didn't get very far. Let's start by reading the complaint. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to start by reading the facts. These are the facts according to the petitioner Antonio Musumisi. Plaintiff Antonio Musumisi is a 29-year-old lifelong resident of New Jersey who lives with his girlfriend in Edgewater. Mr. Musumisi holds a BS in computer science and currently works as a software developer for an investment firm. Morgan Stanley is who he was working for. So he's, he's educated, he's intelligent, he's a professional, he's probably not out there acting a fool. Mr. Musumisi is an active member of the Manhattan Libertarian Party. He regularly reads libertarian newspapers and blogs and listens to libertarian radio programs. While not a professional photographer, Mr. Musumisi uses photography to record political spe speeches and to document instances of police misconduct. Actual libertarians know and understand the Libertarian Party, unlike Mr. Freeman. In early November of 2009, Mr. Musumisi heard about Julian Heikman, a libertarian activist who had advocated for jury nullification outside the federal courthouse at 500 Pearl Street. Mr. Musumisi learned that Mr. Heikman had appeared outside of the courthouse multiple times in consecutive weeks starting in October 2009, and that on each occasion Mr. Heikman had been arrested for distributing pamphlets to potential jurors. Concerned about the police mistreatment of Mr. Heikman by law enforcement personnel, or excuse me, concerned about the possible mistreatment of Mr. Heiklin by law enforcement personnel, Mr. Musumisi contacted Mr. Heiklin and offered to observe and record a future protest at the courthouse. In the morning of October, or excuse me, in the morning of November 9th, 2009, Mr. Musumisi traveled to Moynihan Federal Courthouse at 500 Pearl Street during his lunch break to document Mr. Heiklin's political activities. For this purpose, he brought a handheld video camera. Mr. Musumisi arrived at the plaza in front of the Pearl Street entrance at about 11.30 a.m., the courthouse sits between Pearl Street on the south and Worth Street on the north. A plaza lies immediately to the west of the courthouse, running the length of the courthouse between Pearl Street and Worth Street. The southern edge of the plaza is contiguous with the sidewalk on Pearl Street. Throughout the day, the plaza is frequently full of people who use it to enter the courthouse, eat lunch, smoke, or walk between Pearl Street and Worth Street. There are no signs in the plaza indicating that the plaza is federal property or that federal regulations restrict photography in the area. Upon information and belief, the public has unrestricted access to the plaza 24 hours a day. At approximately 11.45 a.m. on November 9th, Mr. Heiklin entered the plaza at the southern end of the courthouse steps and began to distribute pamphlets. 
About 10 minutes later, Mr. Musumisi introduced himself to Mr. Heiklin, whom he had not previously met in person, and conducted an interview that he recorded with his video camera. While Mr. Musumisi and Mr. Heiklin were talking, Defendant Inspector Clifford Barnes of the Federal Protective Service emerged from behind Mr. Musumisi and confronted Mr. Heiklin. Mr. Musumisi stepped back about 10 feet to record Inspector Barnes' arrest of Mr. Heiklin. Once Mr. Heiklin was arrested, Inspector Barnes approached Mr. Musumisi and told him that he was in violation of a federal regulation concerning or governing photography on federal property. Inspector Barnes then informed Mr. Musumisi that he was under arrest. Inspector Barnes and Defender, Defendant John Doe, another officer in plain clothes, detained Mr. Musumisi, forced him to sit on the pavement, and confiscated his camera's memory card for evidence. Mr. Musumisi then asked why he'd been arrested. Inspector Barnes showed him a copy of federal regulation stating that it governed photography on federal property. When Mr. Musumisi asked whether notice was required, Inspector Barnes responded by saying, in essence, no notice, you knew what you were doing. Mr. Musumisi explained he did not know about the regulation. Inspector Barnes responded that Mr. Musumisi was learning the hard way. While Inspector Barnes prepared a ticket for violating the regulation, Officer John Doe told Mr. Musumisi that he should have stopped recording when he was asked. Inspector Barnes corrected the officer and told him that he had not warned Mr. Musumisi to turn his camera off. After being arrested and detained for approximately 20 minutes, Mr. Musumisi was, was released with a ticket for violating the re photography regulation identified on the ticket as 41 CFR 102-74.420. When asked, Officer John Doe refused to provide his name or badge number to Mr. Musumisi. On March 23, 2010, the photography charge against Mr. Musumisi was dismissed. On November 16, 2009, Mr. Musumisi returned to the plaza again to witness Mr. Heiklin's political activity and possible arrest. Mr. Musumisi arrived at about 11.45 a.m. This time, however, Mr. Musumisi stood outside the plaza on an adjacent sidewalk in an attempt to avoid arrest. Inspector Barnes later arrived and arrested Mr. Heiklin. While Inspector Barnes did not detain or arrest Mr. Musumisi, a U.S. Marshal approached Mr. Musumisi and warned that he would be charged with an offense for his photography. Another photographer in the plaza observed Mr. Heiklin being arrested and began taking photographs of the arrest. Inspector Barnes noticed the photographer and threatened to arrest him. Upon information and belief, although Inspector Barnes ultimately released the photographer, he warned him that photography in the plaza without permission was illegal. In the months since these events, as a result of this harassment and the earlier arrest, when Mr. Musumisi has returned to observe protests outside the courthouse, he has been afraid to bring his camcorder because he does not want to be arrested again. On April 19, 2010, Mr. Musumisi returned to observe and report on a protest. While standing on the sidewalk, he was singled out by Defendant Barnes and other federal agents. Inspector Barnes asked him, having fun yet, and an unidentified agent photographed Mr. Musumisi. This experience has heightened Mr. Musumisi's anxiety about recording video of future protests at the courthouse. The federal regulation Mr. Musumisi was charged with violating was 41 CFR 102-74.420, which regulates photography on federal property. The regulation requires advanced permission for taking photographs in certain agency-occupied areas. The regulation also identifies specific areas that are exempt from this requirement, provided the photography is for news purposes. It's for a news purpose. An accompanying regulation states that notice of the restriction must be posted at the entrance to each facility in which it operates. The regulation states in part, persons entering in or on federal property may take photographs of a space occupied by a tenant agency for non-commercial purposes only with the permission of the occupying agency concerned, b space occupied by a tenant agency for commercial purposes only with written permission of an authorized official of the occupying agency concerned, and c. building entrances, lobbies, foyers, corridors, or auditoriums for news purposes. This regulation has been included in the Code of Federal Regulations in various forms since at least 1957. Authority for the regulation is provided in 40 U.S.C. 1315. 
This statute delegates authority for enforcement of this regulation to the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, under whose direction defendants operate. A limiting regulation governs the applicability of the photography regulation by requiring that notice be posted in areas where it applies. The notice regulation, 41 CFR 102-74.365, states in part that federal agencies must post the notice in the appendix to this part at each public entrance to each public facility. The, te the text of the appendix includes a copy of the text of Regulation 41 CFR 102-74.420. Notice was not posted in the areas where Mr. Musumisi was arrested pursuant to 102-74.420. Upon information and belief, defendants have arrested at least one other photographer pursuant to the regulation on a sidewalk outside a federal building in Lower Manhattan. Upon information and belief, this regulation is enforced differently in other federal jurisdictions and with other populations in the same jurisdiction. First, upon information and belief, federal agents in Philadelphia permit photographers to take photographs and record video on federal property outside the James A. Byrne Federal Courthouse. Second, upon information and belief, it is the practice of the Supreme Court police to allow photography with personal cameras on the steps of the United States Supreme Court in Washington, D.C. Finally, in the plaza outside 500 Pearl Street in Manhattan, People departing the citizenship naturalization ceremony held at the Moynihan Courthouse on Friday mornings have been allowed to take photos in the plaza without interference. And then it goes into the causes of action and everything. So what do we know? We know that it is being, it is being applied unevenly. Um, if, a, if a regulation is content neutral on its face... But in actual practice, it is not content neutral, then it would be subject to strict scrutiny and the government will most likely lose because people are being allowed to take film or to take photos after their naturalization ceremony in the plaza. You take photos in the plaza after their naturalization ceremony in the courthouse. Then if people aren't allowed to film protests or arrests, but they are allowed to film the uh, people who have just been naturalized, that's content discrimination. Another issue that we have is that it's outside. It is in a plaza, a plaza that is home to protests and other forms of expressive activity. The third issue that we have is that the enabling statute doesn't address photography outside. 41 CFR 102-74.420 address, addresses three kinds of things. Number one, space occupied by attendant agency for news purposes, space occupied by attendant agency for commercial purposes, and then a building entrance is inside, a building lobby is inside, if a lobby is inside, a foyer is inside, a corridor is inside, and an auditorium is inside. So the statute that they're using, or the CFR that they're using, doesn't deal with outside. And Mr. Musumisi wasn't doing anything disruptive or anything like that. He's an upstanding citizen, all that other fun stuff. So now let's look at the settlement. So we know we know what the what the complaint was dealing with that was filed on April 22nd of 2010, and we know what the stipulation is going to deal with because it is related to the complaint. So it's going to deal with photography on federal property outside. And it and it's going to deal specifically with who are the defendants? The Department of Homeland Security, the Federal Protective Service, and then the various agents of the Federal Protective Service. Now, the Federal Protective Service is a sub-agency of the Department of Homeland Security. So the DHS would be defending on it because the FPS is their sub-agency. So let's look at the stipulation and order. This is something, a stipulation is something that the parties agree to. And if it's a stipulation and order, then the parties agree to it 
And then the judge signs it saying that, you know, what the parties agreed to is now in effect. Whereas plaintiff Antonio Musumisi filed a complaint in the above captioned action on or about April 22nd, 2010, alleging, among other things, that he was arrested by an officer of the Federal Protective Services in November of 2009 while videotaping on the plaza outside of a federal courthouse at 500 Pearl Street, New York, New York, and cited for violating 41 CFR 102-74.420 and further alleging that the arrest violated his rights under the Constitution of the United States and... Whereas the parties wish to resolve this action without further litigation, and whereas FPS construes, let me repeat that, whereas the FPS construes 41 CFR 102-74.420 not to prohibit individuals from photographing, including motion photography, of the exterior of federal courthouses from publicly accessible spaces, such as streets, sidewalks, parks, and plazas, and the FPS has not construed any other federal regulation or federal statute to prohibit such photography of the exterior of federal courthouses, though it makes no representation about local rules or orders. It is hereby stipulated and agreed by and among the parties to the above captioned action that the the action will be resolved as follows. Number one, the action is dismissed with prejudice. That means that they can't refile it and without costs, subject to reopening should the provisions of paragraph 2 of the stipulation and order not be consummated within 60 days of the entry of the stipulation and order. Number two, FPS will provide a written instruction to its officers and employees engaged in law enforcement, stating that for federal courthouses, under the protective jurisdiction of FPS, there are currently... No general security regulations prohibiting exterior photography by individuals from publicly accessible spaces absent a local written rule, regulation, or order. Absent, that means unless there is a local written rule, regulation, or order. The instruction will also inform FPS officers and employees of the public's general right to photograph the exterior general right not not a right that can't be abridged in some way, but it's a general right, like you have a general right to bear arms, to photograph the exterior, exterior of federal courthouses, courthouses from publicly accessible spaces. Counsel for defendants will provide written notice to counsel for plaintiff upon issuance of such a written instruction. Do you see how, how they've limited it? It is not a broad stipulation. Nothing in this agreement precludes FPS or the United States or any department agency officer, agency agent officer or employee of the United States, collectively the government, or any law enforcement officer from taking any legally permissible law enforcement action, including, but not limited to, approaching individual taking photographs and asking for the voluntary permission of information such as the purpose of taking the photographs for, or the identity of the individual or taking lawful steps to ascertain whether unlawful activity or reconnaissance for the purpose of terrorist or unlawful act is being undertaken. FPS will not treat plaintiff in ways inconsistent with the stipulation and order. This agreement does not constitution, constitute an admission of liability or fault on the part of the government. Plaintiff will file an administrative tort claim with FPS on standard form 95 pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 2675. Upon receipt of the administrative tort claim, FPS agrees to pay plaintiff $1,500, which sum is in full settlement of any and all claims plaintiff now has or any or may hereafter acquire against defendants or the government on account of alleged facts, events, and circumstances giving rise to this action. FPS will pay plaintiff $3,350 in full satisfaction of any claim plaintiff may make for attorney's fees and expenses or costs, yada, yada, yada. Uh, The government has informed plaintiff that the memory card seized uh, is going to be used and in evidence, et cetera. And then when it's done being used as in evidence, probably against Heiklin, he'll be returned to him. um, And it's the full settlement and everything and releases and discharges, payments made, plaintiff and government agree this contains full entire agreement between them, blah, blah, blah. Signed on October 1st of 2010. You can see that it does not say anything at all about filming interiors. 
number one. Uh, number two, it doesn't say that it limits the GSA because uh, 42 USC 102-74.420 or 41 CFR 102-74.420. This is it. It has to be posted at each public entrance, each federal facility, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Photographs for news, advertising, or commercial purposes, except where security regulations, rules, orders, or directives apply, except where those apply, or a federal court order or rule prohibits it, persons entering in or on federal property may take photographs of, and then space occupied by a tenant agency, space occupied by a tenant agency, and building entrances, lobbies, foyers, corridors, or auditoriums for news purposes. And no, it's not just auditoriums for news purposes. It is all three of them, or four of them, entrances, lobbies, foyers, quarters, fi all five of them, if it's for news purposes. Because you'll notice that it's photographs for news, advertising, or commercial purposes. So it's dealing with news, advertising, or commercial purposes. And in this particular section, it is only news purposes. There is no, there is no, nothing carved out in 41 CFR 102-74-420, allowing for uh, photography for commercial or advertising purposes in lobbies, foyers, corridors, entrances, or auditoriums. So I think, I, I hope that kind of makes it clear that the stipulation isn't the end-all be-all that Right to Record wants it to be. It is very limited. It is incredibly limited. It is limited to the exterior of federal courthouses. And it is saying absent a written local rule, regulation, or order, and that there is currently, at the time of this writing, no general security regulations, which means that at some point in time, there could be. Now, there's also going to be we know, that we know the tests that would apply. Generally speaking, a plaza, you know, if it's, been, if it's been held open forever for expressive activity, then it may be a traditional public forum. And if it is a traditional public forum, then you have to look at it. If there's a content restriction, strict scrutiny. If it's a time, place, or manner restriction, that's intermediate scrutiny. So you have to look at it through that analysis, but then you have to actually run the analysis. And the end goal of the analysis is to figure out whether or not after you apply all the factors, after you apply the facts to the test, at the end of it, is, the, is there a sufficient enough government concern? Does this uh, particular rule narrowly enough address that specific government concern and is it is the, is the method that they go about reasonable enough and i'm very much broadly stating that to try to cover the strict scrutiny test and the intermediate scrutiny test but once you get inside of a building then the analysis is going to shift pretty dramatically you're most likely not going to be in a traditional public forum. It is almost certain you're not in a traditional public forum. Traditional public forums deal with outside spaces almost exclusively. I can't think of any traditional public forums that are inside. Because remember, the examples of traditional public forums are parks, streets, sidewalks, potentially plazas. I think plazas should apply. Those are outdoor things, though. Those are all outdoors. Now, maybe there are traditional public forums that are indoors. I'm not limiting it. The court has never state, stated that traditional public forums have to be outdoors. I'm just saying I don't know of any examples of a traditional public forum that's indoors. Almost certainly, the post office is not a traditional public forum. Again, U.S. v. Kakinda. I don't have it up, but U.S. v. Kakinda deals with some of the 39 CFR, uh, what is it, 232.1? 232.1, yeah, conduct on postal property. 
And you may notice that 232.1, 39 CFR 232.1 is not 41 CFR 102-74.420. They are different statutes. Now, they use very similar language. They, this one also talks about entrances, lobbies, foyers, corridors, and auditoriums. When used for public meetings, again, the when used for public meetings will apply to the all of them. Or news purposes, I don't know. News purposes applies to all of them. For public meetings, probably applies to auditoriums, but it may not. Who knows? Who really cares? Uh, the end purpose of this is that it is a similarly written thing. And it may be if they do apply this outdoors, like in Coquinda, if instead of trying to uh, hand out political literature or something like that, instead of setting up a, a uh, tables to try to hand out political literature and solicit um, people to sign their petition, all that other fun stuff, if instead of that, they're trying to apply it to photography, would it be a would it be reasonable? We know it's a non-public forum, so the analysis in Kikinda would be based on a non-public forum style analysis. And all the government has to show is that it's that the regulation is reasonable. And it's not what you think is reasonable, it's what the court will end up thinking is reasonable. And whether it's viewpoint neutral. And if they say you can't photograph out here, then that's probably uh, content neutral or viewpoint neutral. It might not be content neutral, but it's probably going to be viewpoint neutral because it's a photograph. I don't know what your viewpoint on a photograph is going to be. So the, the big thing is going to be whether or not it's reasonable to apply a restriction on photography outside. Inside, it's probably more reasonable to apply a restriction against photography. It's probably more reasonable. Whether or not it ends up being reasonable, I don't know. You can make an argument that it is unreasonable to restrict photography in a, in a post office. You could make that argument. I wouldn't necessarily say that you are wrong for making that argument because reasonable minds can reasonably differ. And until it gets in front of a court, we don't know. We don't know 100% for certain. But I do know that the government tends to lose almost always on strict scrutiny. Generally speaking, it loses more than it wins on the intermediate scrutiny. And it almost always wins on the reasonable standard for a non-public forum. So to sum up, the TLDR version. Musumisi doesn't affect anything with regards to the post office, period. It marginally affects filming the exterior of courthouses. That's, that is the most you can say about it because they qualified it so heavily. It marginally affects filming the exterior of courthouses, of federal courthouses, marginally. And you have to deal with the post office regulation separate from Musumisi because the FPS doesn't provide security for post offices. The post office wasn't a party to the suit. It's not under the DHS. Even the GSA wasn't a party to the suit because the 41 CFR 102-74.420, this one right here, this is a GSA, General Services Agency, I think they call it. This is a GSA CFR. The GSA wrote this, not the DHS. The GSA did. And the GSA wasn't a party to this suit. So this suit doesn't affect this CFR. All it does is it clarifies the FPS's position on it. The FPS construes the CFR 
to not prohibit individuals from photographing the exterior of federal courthouses from publicly accessible spaces such as streets, sidewalks, parks, and plazas. So I hope that clears it up. Uh, Thank you for watching. I apologize for how uh, long this video is, but You know, sometimes it it helps to do a deep dive, especially when you're dealing with people like RTR. Thanks for watching. Have a great morning.